Coming up, the best of travel and entertainment on this week's show. We travel to Harrapia Sports to meet some of the most famous predators at the Lion and Safari Park. Then we took a turn at Maboneng for the latest local film screening. And just to take things up a notch, we hang out with the gentle giants at the Elephant Century. Right here is where you can experience what it's like walking with giants what it takes to be in the presence of the magnificent kings of the jungle. we got four elephants here. In total, we've got about 11 elephants, but we've got two other sanctuaries also, one in Hazy View and one in Plettenberg Bay. An elephant's not like a horse that will step on you. They know exactly where their feet is. They won't even step on a dung beetle or a giant snail unless they start with. We're going to just walk down the road. If anything happens, just go to the left side of the road and allow the elephants to pass. Quite interesting, how do we measure an elephant's height? In the crazy front foot down and that fatty pad expands. They take a string two and a half times around the circumference of the front foot. When you pull that string straight, that will be the estimate height from the shoulder to the floor. The Elephant Sanctuary offers edutainment for all family members. Before a one-on-one -on -one with the elephants, the guide takes you through key factors about the gentle giants that enhances and eases you into a space where you are able to embrace them. How do we tell the age of an elephant? It's through the molars. So guys, this is one tooth. This is not many little teeth together. This is one tooth, and there's one, two, three, four, which is one set. Yes, our elephants, they are all rescued elephants, but they are from different places. They are not from one place. So if you come here, we walk with you, like here, we walk with them to the mountain. You can see for yourself that they do free feed. They are so free and for them, they feel comfortable with us. As you can see in the forest, they are feeling comfortable around us. So surreal and thrilling to be so close to this fantastic four. We discovered that during the lockdown time, and there were no clients coming around. So we really saw that this elephant, they missed the, the clients, also the people, because they were walking to the places where we used to do the, the interaction with the people. Mm -hmm. So though, and when they get there, they were doing the, like the fun sound, like rumbling. So that's where we saw that they miss people. And when we opened, then those kind of movements, they were a little bit relaxed and see, okay, the people are here now. And they do the rumbling, and those rumbling, we don't know exactly what they are saying, but it shows that they are communicating among themselves. That's where we say, okay, they really do miss the people. Now that we had established a friendship, it was time for a feeding session. And it was then that I could be able to understand how they communicate with their daily visitors. Oh, you can grab it. Nice. But if you can feed a little more, Exactly. Um, no, this is more like like your part of their diet, but I mean, oh, what's that? She doesn't like the butternut, <laughs> so let's give her uh, all the pumpkin. At the end of a busy day, the elephants retreat into their shelter and prepare for an afternoon free feeding routine. And for me, I went home with incredible memories that could just as well be documented in the African version of the Jungle Book. Up next, we visit the Congolese-born Atis Dora. Violence against women and children continues to rear its head in the country, making headlines almost on a daily basis. 
According to the World Health Organization, one in three women experience abuse from their partner. As a result of these alarming numbers, communities as well as organizations that fight against gender-based violence have been up in arms, highlighting this plight at different platforms. Artists have also joined in. We visited Congolese-born artist Dora Previous, a sculptural artist whose art focuses on breaking the silence on gender-based violence and injustice that women face on the daily. She gave us a tour of her sculptures display. Um, this piece is very, very precious to me because it's one of the pieces the piece that I did when I started sculpting. And then you'll see, I like when I started, you can see I have the contrast on the, on the um, sculpture. You've got this wild hair, which shows that the woman is fearless. And then the contrast part of it is like, she has this, her face has serenity, you know? And that's what I love to see in a woman. Dora, this beautiful piece, what was the inspiration behind this? piece like it's it, it's breathtaking and this piece particular here was inspired by the crime around women against women so I'll, I'll take you briefly to like this one here i mean you can see on her face the sadness that she's got it's got inspired by a picture was taken but the crime was happening in congo and then this woman le lost all the members of her family. Second one here is also a type of violence happening in the world. You'll see here, there is the hand of the, the husband. Actually, that's why I also focused to put a ring to see that. She, it's, it is conjugal, you know, um, violence happening also inside the, 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 the couple, the household, and people cannot talk or afraid to talk. And for me, being quiet, it's actually being on the side of the oppressor. And in this piece, it's about stolen childhood. And then we know that in part of the world, women have been abused also. And then they have been actually sold for prostitution. And then you'll see here, I've put a note to show that women are not for sale. Mm. They want to keep you quiet by buying you. So, Jabulo, now I'm going to show you my roots. Okay. Um, so here I'm going to talk, this is Zebola. And uh, the, the one thing I like about my sculptures also is that it releases my fear in, from the past. So this particular woman here is a healer. I used to be so scared of her because they will come in outside the street and they'll do a ritual dance. So the hair here is actually for her to communicate with the gods, you know. And then you'll see she's got jewelries all over her. And then you'll see she's got also this uh, wire skirt that she's wearing. All that is part of the healing. And then she's got three legs, which shows her that she's got superpower, you know. She's not just a normal person. And then obviously, the Asian all around her makes it more interesting. And I've actually covered all of this with plaster. I'm now going to take you to the next piece, which is going to be part of the exhibition as well. Its name is uh, Metamorphosis. So Metamorphosis is transformation. So if you experience the transformation of a caterpillar to a butterfly, so you've actually experienced metamorphosis. I did um, a cast and then I was trying to, to do another piece of a face. So while I was actually taking out the piece, you can see here there is plasters, which I was working with. While I'm taking the, 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 the face out, it gets stuck. So it gave me the idea of to say, you know, this is a transformation, it's a metamorphosis. And then you can see here that the new face is actually coming out. That's why I use the, the gold in it. And then also, how do we see ourselves, you know? And then for me, the transformation actually just begins when you recognize yourself 
Thank you very much for coming to my, my home and seeing all the work that I've been putting through toward this year. The famous Artsy Maboneng Precinct is home to the center of the less good idea, a hub for all creatives. All kinds of artists are welcome here. It's a safe space for trial and error. It's where they come and share ideas and devise original and incredible works. Currently, some of them are working on a series of short films titled Odd Portraits of This Place. When we were faced with COVID, we started asking ourselves, how do we then keep the momentum going with the artists? So in the hard lockdown, we, we challenged ourselves to say, what can we do in our own homes? How do we turn our homes into performance spaces? How do we keep the momentum of artists going in this time? And the idea was to do what we called the long minute. So is to do you know, a, a minute long films of people you know, using their homes, using their spaces as, as a performance, as a stage to create you know, work. We have got five films. The first one uh, that we opened with was a ballerina in, on the street, you know, a ballerina and a singer, and you know, Bongi was a performer in, in, in one of those. It was called Something Is Gone. Um, and it was just exploring the inspiration of what we see every day in Johannesburg, you know, artists basking, you know, others going to school, getting inspiration from, from the streets. And the second one was uh, Opa Sebego was exploring what is, you know, the, the context of eating. Uh, because we talk about eating a lot of times in, in you know, um, we've got the Zondo Commission, which is speaking about eating lots of money, where people, you know, so there was that thing of, um, Opa was, you know, uh, actually like captivated by the aspect of people wanting to eat to the extent of, you know, no longer just, it's no longer just about eating, it's, it's, dis, it's a display of arrogance in the sense of how that eating comes from a 10 rand to a 10 billion to a 100 million. Then the third one uh, was um, as it, done by Katleho um, Solonyani, who is an actor and a writer and a poet and um, in collaboration you know, with the musician Tumile Tsereti, he was in Botswana, he gave us his song to, to, to do it. When Katla was writing this, he was actually thinking about how we receive messages in the context of today, where you know, spirituality and African religions are also into question, you know, and sometimes seen as demonic and other things. And so how else are we going to receive you know, messages if we are not listening to those who you know, we need to listen to, how do we listen to them? And, and, and that's basically, you know, what he was exploring. Um, and then the coming one will be the spirit of Hua, which is, you know, Hua means, you know, the energy of all. And it's, um, it's a koi, you know, term. Something is gone, a stars this incredibly talented artist. Working on the streets of Johannesburg was exhilarating. Um, I think just being on the streets of Johannesburg is an experience. It's, it's an episode, it's a, it's a thing. So to do what we do in different spaces, like theatre spaces, office spaces, whatever your space is on the streets, gives it a whole new life and a whole new sense of, of, of meaning of that thing, I suppose. Um, and also to, to play a part of somebody who actually spends their time on the streets, either just using the streets or working on the street that was very... It was a moving experience, but I, I think it's very easy for, for performers to say things are moving, because what does that even mean? Yeah. Naturally, there are challenges like, where is the sun? You're outside now. Yeah. It's not lights being angled. The sun decides where it's going. It doesn't care what you're doing there. So where is the sun? Where do you face? Um, 
what are the sounds of the street? Are they conducive to what you're doing or are they counterproductive? You know, which way are you coming in, going out, people passing by, not sure whether they can walk across you, behind you, are they part of the thing? So there are those very um, practical challenges. One of the gifts of COVID, I think, um, is the decentralization of art and performance from theater spaces. So um, a friend of mine actually asked, why, if you want to perform a house, why make a house inside a theater? Why not just use a house? You know, like why make a living room inside a theater? Why not just make, do the thing in the living room? Um, which may be considered a very basic question and there's the magic of the theater that it was made and all of that. But then because we've been shut out of theater spaces, performance spaces, we've had to find other ways of bringing our crafts to life. And that thing of going into the street or using a park or using your home, that has been a true gift of, of COVID. And I, 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 I am definitely sold on doing things not just in a theater or in a typical performance space and just finding other spaces where art can live and be accessed as well because theaters are not always the most accessible spaces as well. After a long, hard lockdown, it's good to see creatives coming together and doing what they love. The Lion and Safari Park has gained its popularity through its famous residents. The likes of George the Lion and the beloved Giraffe Zoe. Today, we rub shoulders with Shando. To us, he is an animal handler, but to these predators, he is their father. Shando, hi, how are you? Hi, Bula, how are you doing? I'm good, man. Welcome to the Lion and Safari Park. Thank you so much. So, give me a background history about what exactly do you do here at the Lion Safari Park? So I'm one of the animal handlers and caretakers here at the Lion and Safari Park. Um, this is actually my 14th year on the reserve, so I'm pretty much part of the furniture now. <laughs> um, and yeah, I've just been working with the animals, looking after them over the last 14 years, and that's basically what's allowed me to build such close relationships to now uh, what I call my animal family. Mm, okay. So today I want to learn more about your job and I want to see the safari through your eyes. So I want you to take me through uh, give me the experience, so also our viewers, so they can also come out and, and, and visit and see. Awesome, we'd love to show you the reserve. Okay. Should we go take a look? Yes, let's go. Awesome. Like most businesses that have been affected by the COVID-19, the Lion Park had to come up with creative ways for the guests to enjoy visiting the park. So COVID, I think for anyone, I, I don't even think it's just isolated to the tourism industry, I think, uh, COVID has had a huge effect on the country as a whole, so many different businesses. Um, and it's just been a case of pushing through as much as we possibly can. Um, we're very thankful that we have the option of self-drive here at the park. So even under the higher restrictions, people were able to um, still come visit the park in the safety and uh, of their own car and kind of still remain distance from everyone else and not interact with people. At our first stop, we met George and his family. So behind me, we have one of our prides here at the Lion and Safari Park. Now, um, he's basically my partner in crime, George, the big male. Um, he's nine years old. We also have Rielda, which is the female that's with him. And then the other two are actually slightly younger. They are actually George and Rielda's cubs and they've grown up in the pride. So you saw they are a little bit more hesitant coming towards me. Um, but again, I've you know grown up with them, been around them since birth. So they do accept me as part of the pride in here. These guys do have a specific feeding time. Um, here at the park, we feed them on Saturdays and Sundays and they get a small snack feed on Wednesdays. Uh, guests that do visit the park actually get to see the Saturday and Sunday feeds. So it's a great time to actually come and see them because they're so active and moving around. Um, in the wild, it's slightly different. In the wild, lions actually eat less frequently, but they eat much larger portions. So lions eat about 25% of their body weight um, at a full sitting. So for a big male, that'll actually be up to 50 kilograms of meat. George has starred in a number of feature films and commercials. So some of the nature documentaries that you guys watch on like National Geographic and BBC, uh, part of the clips are actually filmed here. Um, George 
doing a lot of the close-up stuff when they get those really close shots of the eyes and so on. Um, as well as he recently, within the last week, actually shot a commercial. So um, that'll hopefully be coming out soon. Over the years, Shando has created a bond with his animals, making it easier to work with them. However, as is with every job, there are challenges. Each and every animal has a very, very different personality. Um, and one of the challenges is understanding and learning that individual animal's personalities, their likes, their dislikes. Um, and I think that's one of the more challenging things. Um, but again, it's one of the most important things because um, that's what's going to help you establish the relationship with the animal. Shandu also took us to meet his other family members. Good boy. Come on. We got some snackies. Come, sit, sit. Good boy. No, take nicely, nicely, nicely. Good boy. These boys are now about seven years old. There's actually four brothers in here, so we only have two with us now. The other two are being a little bit lazy. Among the famous lion and giraffe, you can also see some zebras, wild beast, and impala. But the star giraffe Zoe always manages to steal the show. So this is Zoe. She's one of uh, a few of the divas we have here at the park. <laughs> um, so Zoe, Purdy and a few of the other giraffe people are able to actually come and visit here at the park. Um, they can get some food and have this really cool experience where they're able to get this close to them. Um, the giraffe here are quite famous and quite popular. Our giraffe were in the movie Blended with Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore. Um, if you remember a few years ago, there's a King Price advert where the giraffe stuck its head in the window. That's also our giraffe. And again, lots of nature documentaries, TV shows and, and adverts. Thank you so much for allowing us into your space. Thank you so much for coming and visiting us here yeah. at the Lion and Safari Park. We appreciate it and I hope uh, Yeah. You want more food? I'm pushing you, man. <laughs> and that's how we end this week's show. If you want to connect with us, it's at Trends on SABC or Twitter and Instagram. Hashtag stop the spread of COVID-19. Hashtag stay safe.